of nuclear fusion is made to be available on Earth, it can provide endless energy with zero carbon emissions. Plus, it comes with no long-term radioactive waste. How cool, right? Its power is made to energize stars, thereby proving its far-reaching possibilities. Stick around as this video will talk about the many possibilities of nuclear fusion in its billion dollar industry. Germany's plasma research center leads the industry with its latest nuclear fusion reactor. Experts are taking a huge leap of faith as they are working towards the production of renewable clean energy with fusion power and its ability to copy the sun's abilities. Nuclear fusion reactors are able to combine atoms rather than isolate them. This results in producing clean and safe energy according to physicists. An experimental reactor called Wendelstein 7-X Stellarator was manufactured to be able to fabricate hydrogen plasma. With the aid of Stellarator, hydrogen atoms are shattered together until it gets to a temperature of 100 million degrees. At this level, helium is produced through the process of fusion. In fact, the stellar radar score produces a tiny star with energy producing capabilities similar to that of our sun. The apparatus exhibited its capacity to hold a loop of helium ions in place at a million degrees for a brief period of time. Can you grasp how intense the stellar radar is? A scorching 40 million degrees Kelvin was attained by the helium ions rushing through the plasma. This is four times hotter than in the tested samples in which the W7-X received 18 times more energy. The surface of the sun only has a temperature of 5,505 degrees Celsius as a point of comparison. Atoms fusing together to produce fusion energy is unlike the typical nuclear energy, created when big atoms break apart. It doesn't generate the same radiation issues as atom splitting power making it a good energy source for the future. Fusion is the greenest method of producing electricity, excluding the radioactive panels that cover the internal walls of the reactor. We need a particular kind of machine to start with a powerful 100 million degrees blow. W7-X is one of two of them that are currently making an impact. Devices like MIT's Alcator C-Mod Tokamak use the electromagnetic fields produced by plasma to help maintain the charged particles in control. Fuel injection creates a hot cloud of particles that is extremely full of energy. However, it suffers from instability problems that makes power generating a temporary operation. Although they don't quite equal the output of the tokamak, accelerators like the W7-X use banks of magnetic coils to confine plasma, giving them more control and allowing the hot ring of helium jelly to swell extended periods of time. The 15-meter wide device of W7-X seems to have demonstrated how to fix that problem. Another nuclear fusion innovation that is recognized is the ITER nuclear reactor, which is the first and biggest device of its own kind in the world created by a French nuclear power research facility in Kadarache. By fusing two separate forms of hydrogen known as deuterium and tritium, the device would generate 500 megawatts of power, which is 10 times the energy it would require to operate. ITER will be a brand new type of nuclear fusion device when it is operational in 2025, measuring 100 feet both by height and diameter. A stellarator operates similarly to a tokamak in that it suspends hydrogen plasma that has been heated to the pressures and temperatures necessary to fuse material into helium. A total of 50 3.5 meter tall superconducting magnet coils make up the Wendelstein 7-X. The stellarator traps the plasma in a twisting and spiraling configuration as opposed to a tokamak torus or donut shaped form. In a tokamak, the flow of the electrons and ions is induced to resemble an electric current through a transformer. When paired with a magnetic field that already extends the entire length of the tube, this current creates a vertical looping magnetic field that creates the necessary spiraling field lines. The tokamak, however, holds a plasma better than the other. This is partially due to the symmetry of a tokamak, which enables particles to travel along smoother paths. Due to the numerous wiggles and ripples that stellarators experience, 
it is usual for significant quantities of small particles to be lost. As a result, the vast majority of fusion investigations conducted since the 1970s have led to the enormous ITER reactor project. Warmer temperatures can now be reached thanks to the installation of graphite tiles inside the wall of the Wendelstein 7-X. The operators may pump more plasma in at higher temperatures and protect the twisting chamber walls with an interior liner, known as a diverter, providing more control. The Wendelstein 7-X accelerator was improved to demonstrate the viability of power facilities powered by stellarator-style fusion reactors. The magnetic field that keeps the hot plasma controlled and removed from the vessel's walls was designed with a great lot of computational and theoretical effort in order to address the shortcomings of prior stellarators. Limiting the plasma's energy losses as a result of the magnetic field's ripple was one of the main goals. Plasma particles drift away even after being attached to the magnetic field lines, losing energy as a result. In contrast, tokamak has little losses from magnetic field ripple due to its symmetrical structure, tiny plasma vortex motions, and turbulence, which is also included as a loss channel. Accelerators have an impact on these energy losses. Because of this, Stellarator improvement must minimize neoclassical losses in order to match Tokamak's excellent containment characteristics. Wendelstein 7-X magnetic field was designed to lessen the losses as a result. Using the heating technology that is currently available, Wendelstein 7-X is now able to produce high temperatures plasmas and achieve a world record at acquiring high temperatures. It can be seen how close you can get to the parameters for a burning plasma by combining temperature, plasma, density, and energy containment time. Neoclassical losses contributed significantly to the energy balance, accounting for 30% of the heating power, while turbulence losses were minimal at these high plasma temperatures. It now has been proven through a thought experiment how Wendelstein 7-X neoclassical optimization works. The same plasma quantities and profiles that led to the record performance in Wendelstein 7-X were expected to be achieved with implants that had less optimal magnetic fields. After computing the predicted neoclassical losses, the outcome was very apparent. Physically speaking, they couldn't be more than the heating power being applied. As a result, only magnetic fields with minimal neoclassical losses are capable of producing the plasma characteristics seen in Wendelstein 7-X. The inverse is also applicable. Neoclassical losses could be effectively decreased by changing the Wendelstein's magnetic fields. In contrast, Tokamak has major downsides. For a commercial fusion reactor, the transformer's limited ability to pump a current across plasma in quick bursts is insufficient. Disruptions, which are sudden losses of plasma confinement that can unleash magnetic forces powerful enough to harm the reactor, can occasionally occur when the current in the plasma abruptly fails. Even more recent designs like the spherical Tokamak suffer from the same problems. As there is no plasma currently circulating in stellarators, the fields produced by the external coals are not required to be pulsed. These two aspects are the reasons why some teams have remained with the idea. Because the reactor doesn't generate heat by nuclear fission in a regulated nuclear process, the energy produced is essentially pure. Despite the Wendelstein 7-X inability to generate energy by itself, it is still a stepping stone for us in the possibility of providing potentially unlimited energy produced by using a similar system that powers the sun, as it will someday be utilized to build an endlessly running stellarator reactor. So stay tuned and keep updated with our videos to learn more about the latest update and the future of technology. If you like our content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and turn on the notification bell to be notified whenever we have a new upload. We will keep you updated on reliable technology news, the latest gadgets, and anything related to the tech world here on Futureland. Thank you for watching and see you on our next video.